is darshana vision some vision see darshana you have to understand the word called darshana darshana means to see to see is to be okay if you see some somebody the somebody who will see is separate from you so if i see that photo the photo is separate from you shivana darshana to see shiva is to be shiva if i see shiva i have not seen shiva to see is to be that is the meaning of dashara dashara is loosely translated as seeing 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 in the indian language darshana means to see is to be see for example duryodhana had a darshan of krishna did he have a darshan of krishna duryodhana saw krishna the seeing with the physical eyes is not darshana the physical eyes called charma chakshu means made out of skin charma chakshu cannot see shiva so we crave i want to see shiva with charma chakshu no with the with the physical eyes we cannot see shiva or physical eyes we see shiva but we think we see the world the world is shiva the entire world is universe is shiva but we see it as a world the real nature of shiva we cannot see with the physical eyes so darshana is not seeing not seeing with the physical eyes is it darshana means seeing mental eyes imagination no darshana means to recognize shivoham to see is to be that's the meaning of darshana so duryodhana saw krishna what difference does it make arjuna saw krishna arjuna spent his life 78 years in company of krishna friend relative no transformation only in the mahabharata war time some uh, something happened so seeing with the physical eyes is not darshana seeing with the mental eyes imagination is called vision okay seeing with the physical eyes will be motivator inspiring if you see a great being or bhagwan krishna it will be inspiring but that's not darshana darshana means to see is to be so what is be to be to realize shivoham nan nanam bodu nanalla deha मन बुद्धि दर्शन सो वे ई वॉन्ट सी शिव वन डे फिजिकल फिजिकल इन फैक्ट यू आर सी ओन दर्ल शिव ओन दि नौ i want to see with shiva that we have a shiva with the fancy dress okay so that's the representation of shiva not shiva himself shiva is the pure consciousness which is your own self how do you see your own self you have to be that shiva so it's mentalized i had a vision of a god in my dream i had a vision of a god coming and talking to me i had a vision of a god blessing me these visions are inspiring they help you to motivate but that's not darshana that's a vision darshana means to see the truth to see the truth is to be the truth that's why i use the word 
आत्मदर्शन ब्रह्मदर्शन ब्रह्मदर्शन सत्यदर्शन दर्शन वर्ड इज दर्शन वर्ड इज यूज दैट आत्मदर्शन मीन्स इज नॉट सीइंग माय सेल्फ आत्मा यू कैन नॉट सी आत्मा बिकॉज आत्मा इज सी इट टू सी आत्मा मीन्स बी आत्मा टू बी आत्मा मीन्स टू बी ब्रह्म to be brahman means to be the truth so darshana means to be there's no in to be there's no separation between seer and seen that's called advaita in the knower and known there's no separation if there's separation then you need a mental eye or physical eye then it's not seen It can be called as vision, or that can be seeing a person also. A very evolved being, very sane, we can see. We can be inspired, but still, it's seeing. It's not darshana. So, are we clear, uh, Palaji? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji, it is clear. Then, what did he say? Uh, now, the atma darshana, atma darshana, brahma darshana, that. Um... phrase is very clear now very clear i was uh, i was as it is telling it just like that now it is very clear ah uh, then you said no no your your bhajan is very nice actually you said so many things i want to catch you each of them <laughs> so <laughs> shivana kaana da kannugal what is it shivana ah ah kumkum hachi kolla da hane yako right so yeah. the one uh, if if you don't wear that kumkum bindi what mm. is the point of that uh, uh, forehead right mm. so what is that kumkuma is it a decoration ha huh? it's a fancy dress or it is a sign that i am married or it is a sign that i am married and if i don't put the kumkuma my mother in law will be angry mm. or it's prasadam the kumkum that represents a point of adna chakra okay the consciousness center in our in our head so the kumkum is a meditation symbol it's not a fashion it's not a dress it's not a style it is not a uh, it, it is not a decoration for a woman ornament of course now the kumkum has become one it will look like a lamp or it can look like a snake so many shapes it takes so right so it is not a decoration the kumkum is a meditation practice again and again take my awareness to third eye atma chakra that meditation practice is what we call as uh this uh, i told now what is it shambhavi mudra okay so the kumkum being referred there is a shambhavi mudra to see shiva you have to become shambho shambho mahadeva right Shambhu Mahadev can be there only when you see through third eye. See with the third eye. The third eye is a representation of Kumbhava. So what is that Shambhu Mudra? Shambhu Mahadeva. Shambhu Mahadeva. Shiva Shambhu Mahadeva. Shiva Shambhu Mahadeva. Hara Shambhu Mahadeva. Hara Shambhu Mahadeva. Shambhu. Shambhu. Shiva Shambhu. Shiva Shambhu. Hara Shambhu. Hara Shambhu. So that Kumkum. He is representing a third eye. It is actually a meditation practice called Shambhavi Mudra. One who doesn't do Shambhavi Mudra, what is the point of having a forehead? That's the meaning of that. <laughs> so nice, Bhajan uh, Sir singing of Pallavi Ji. So got it? Ah uh, yes, Prabhu Ji. Huh? So you do you your Kumkum was uh, Shambhavi Mudra or uh, decoration? Uh, decoration. I had no clue. I never thought. to this extent <laughs> <laughs> then you said something else asura what is that se shivana seveya madadidda kai galyatako shivana seveya madadidda kai galyatako the hand should you don't serve shiva what is the use of the hand what is, what is the what is the use of the hand where is shiva the entire universe is shiva the hand serving is atmano mokshatam jagadidaya service to the world in the baba deva yadna pitra yadna manush yadna bhuta yadna rushi yadna 
the hands which don't do yajna service is useless so atmanu mokshatam jagaditaya is what you are saying palavi okay 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 you are you are, you are actually my slogans you are converting into some bhajan uh, <laughs> so next what did you say shivana namava kondada didda nalige yatuko shivana namava kondada didda nalige yatuko shiva is the uh, chanting of shiva nam right om namah shivaya om namah shivaya om namah shivaya om namah shivaya shivaya nama om shivaya nama so this is called shiva nama japa so this is done through verbally nalige so shiva nama has to be gradually the nama of shiva really which is myself in the my inner self so soham is the shiva nam i am that so om namah shiva has to become soham i am shiva the soham has to become silence pure awareness so japa has to become ajapa when you realize the self it becomes ajapa there's no japa because you are already that so you start with the japa that end up with the ajapa that is the meaning of chanting of god's name you start with the chanting but the chanting will become a realization how when it becomes ajapa otherwise it becomes still verbal so you start with the japa chanting of god's name end up with ajapa so om namah shivaya om namah shivaya means om means pure aware om means brahman na ma shivaya is nakara makara shi va ya it represents five elements so the entire universe is shiva first level pancha bhutas is shiva so that is the shiva nama so now from pancha bhuta you have to go to your level your body pancha koshas annamaya kosha pranamaya kosha manomaya kosha vijnanamaya kosha is shiva nama so then pancha kosha you have to go to pancha tanmatra shabda sparsha roopa rasaganta that is shiva nama om namah shivaya okay then one who says i am saying that that has to become shivoham that now from object you have become to subject shivoham then <laughs> shivoham you say is still is a assertion so that it is from physical it is from object to your want to subject so finally it has to be pure awareness that stage is called ajapa ramana maharshi called as i i i i is not a thought i is pure awareness so are we clear palavi ji ha uh, yes prabhu ji no what are so, you can you please explain? i will tell you the <laughs> i will tell you the remaining two verses also so obviously <laughs> ಶಿವನ ಕೀರ್ತಿಯ ಕೇಳದಿದ್ದ ಕಿವಿಗಳ ಯಾತಕೋ ಶಿವನ ಕೀರ್ತಿಯ ಕೇಳದಿದ್ದ ಕಿವಿಗಳ ಯಾತಕೋ ಸೊ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಆಫ್ ಶಿವ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಆಫ್ ಶಿವ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಶಿವ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಆತ್ಮ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಆಫ್ ಶಿವ ನಿರಾಕಾರ ನಿರ್ವಿಕಲ್ಪ ಓಕೆ ಸಚಿದಾನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಸೊ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನಾಟ್ ನೆವರ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಅಟ್ ಆಲ್ ನಿರಾಕಾರ ನಿರ್ಗುಣ ನಿರ್ವಿಕಲ್ಪ ಅಸಂಗ ಓಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದೇರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ದೇವ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೊ ದೆನ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಯೂಸ್ಲೆಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಶ್ರವಣ ಮನ ಮಾಡ ಇಲ್ಲ you are not there is shravana mana itself the glory of shiva is nothing but teaching of vedanta where you understand <laughs> what am <one? laughs> the glory of shiva you can hear and understand only in vedanta 
okay that uh, is yes, uh, are you clear are you yes, yes. no 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 <laughs> no no i'm uh, thankful that at least now i am um, um, blessed to listen to all this okay next what is the shona kirti kya tha kegre aapko then ಭಕ್ತಿಭಾವಿ is not even a desire for happiness <laughs> right a boy says i love you to the girl what does it mean is iphone <laughs> girl says i love you to the boy so basically boy wants some happiness from the girl girl wants some happiness from the boy so when we say love what we are saying is i want happiness from you that poor girl how can she give happiness or poor boy how can she give, give happiness so basically if our concept of love me something which gives me happiness that's the main concept of love understand why should so that's why in brahmanic upanishad yajnavalkya tells his wife maitreyi oh maitreyi when husband says i love you to the wife okay he is not loving the wife for wife's sake he is loving wife for his sake he is feeling happy about it he gives she gives happiness to him the same thing is true other way also right so when we say i love somebody that's because i get happiness from them right so is this bhakti gives me happiness why should i love somebody the love loving somebody or connecting with somebody gives me happiness that's the meaning of that so why should i why should i get happiness because happiness seems to be somewhere more comfortable it's it's my nature i want happiness only and seeking happiness because it's my nature right so whom i really loving i am loving myself only without knowing that i am trying to get happiness from somebody so all this love is not real it's only projection so real love for god or bhakti for god is love for the self atma the real self not the ego self then we all of us love ourselves no see how smart i look how beautiful i look our uh, body body is become the atma no the real love is for the atma bhakti bhakti means love for the self real self it is shiva all other love is expectation of getting some happiness this where this expectation there is always a suffering where this expectation always there is a bondage where there is no bondage where there is no expectation that love only can be for the self so that's why shiva in uh, shiva sutra there are three types of devotees is there veda 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 abeda so typically a person starts with the bheda bheda means i am separate from shiva so that's a devotion the god is separate from me that's a natural starting point for anybody okay so now when the god is separate from me there's always trouble because what is separate from me right any joy or happiness which i get is momentary god may appear in front of me and disappear 
so from beta separation then what happens is you are you are actually you are a, i am a body so i also think the god is a body so person to person love is what i am having in the beta that's called dualistic love dualistic bhakti so this is actually dualistic bhakti is called apara bhakti lower level sorry uh, apara bhakti lower level bhakti lower level love because still you have a concept that i am the body the god is a body a person so from that he gets into next level beda means beda beda so person is beda nothing wrong in that because people start from there only okay so all people start from the shiva 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 did prescribe for a person is beda he prescribes upasana you do this puja this yajna pray to shiva pray to god okay so shiva sutra that pray to god oh please shiva please save me protect me okay so that there is actually now asking for something so that bhakti is called apara bhakti or lower level so that shiva say shiva understands that all most of human beings start there only so that's why shiva gives a technique or practices for them it's called anavopaya anava anu means uh, i am feeling i am limited anu small so for me i am feeling limited that's why i am seeking for somebody shiva right i am feeling limited so god is infinite so i am seeking for the infinite save me protect me that's called anupaya so anupaya prescribed this to puja you do this mantra you chant all the things are prescribed but shiva's teaching is from anupaya you have to move, move to saktopaya okay so don't after you mature from anupaya you move into saktopaya saktopaya means now you have to meditate shivoham i am shiva so this is a meditation is not it is it is not in spirit relation in i am shiva meditation so initially you started shiva is infinity shiva is god i am limited i am anu a small living being so i am praying to god you started anu upaya now you are moving to shiva uh, shambho shakta upaya it's called shakta upaya in shakta upaya you are supposed to meditate shiva okay how can i be shiva shiva is infinite i am limited mind will refuse mind cannot accept it very easy shiva so that's where you have to do shravana manana listen carefully what is the meaning of shiva meaning shiva shiva so shivoham meditation is shivoham means a meditation upasana it's not na so from bahya upasana anupaya means bahya external upasana you are moved into internal upasana called shivoham then you get a clarity the external upasana anupaya or shakta upaya is purified then you get a gnana then you are able to say, then you are able to straight away go to i am awareness i am shiva now you don't need a repetition shivoham shivoham is repetition that's why many people do a practice soham 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 practice they do japa they are all part of the shakta upaya shivoham finally you come to shambha upaya there you just say i am awareness so i am i am awareness finished there's no practice so that's called highest level upaya shambha upaya now shambho upaya when you have come you have come to real bhakti because now your bhakti is not not based on imagination bhakti is based on the reality so that is called para bhakti so shivana one the bhakti which is take a bhava the moment you speak a bhava so the bhakti spoken there is still at the mental level still at the <coughs> apara bhakti the lower level so the apara bhakti has to become para bhakti realization and shiva pure awareness shambha upaya so that is the bhakti where there is no other so i am there shiva is there also problem because there is not true there is not reality how can there be two so real bhakti means advaita bhakti where there is no duality this reality this reality that's called real bhakti it's called para bhakti okay clear yes prabhu you don't have to agree you can argue back 
<laughs> Just because Prabhuji is saying something, you don't have to agree. <laughs> no, no. Uh, okay, I understood Prabhuji. Okay. <laughs> So anybody, any questions? It was really very nice, Prabhuji. Suman here. Okay. Uh, I have been hearing your uh, Krishna stories and uh, Ganesha. Everything you look, we all feel as a layman, we just see the words and the story, the material part of it. Huh. And uh, we are doing all these uh, learning and about 